Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. Today we're going to be talking about five languages of love and actually in how we communicate. You know, there's so much to be said about communication, the way we communicate consciously and how our body language speaks and what truly our subconscious mind wants to communicate. So there is so much about communication. My name is Lisa and I am your host. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Today we are gonna be talking about the five languages of love. Actually, there is a book on this by Gary Chapman. I have the book and I have recommended this book to so many of my clients. And you know, a part of doing hypnotherapy is helping my clients find this communication not only with themselves but of with their loved ones so let's delve into this uh, part of the communication the five languages are it's not so much i love you um, but how do i feel loved by you and that's one of the main things it's we can say a lot about, I love you, I love you, and you know, how apropos it is for me to pick this subject today, especially a day from Valentine's. So I hope you had an incredible Valentine's Day, no matter where you were, what you did, and if you were upset for not receiving what you wanted, dealt with then, did you get something for yourself? Did you love yourself? Did you give something to yourself? Or better yet, did you allow love to come in? Did you allow everything that is surrounding you for you to be grateful for? Because love comes in many ways, right? The love for your partner, your lover, uh, your child, your family, your friends, love, is how we express what we feel about another person. So if this is one of the things that I used to have this communication thing with my former boyfriend and he would say, I love you. And I would say, great, but I don't feel it. It's not that I don't feel it. It's the way I need to feel it was not communicated. So the five languages of love, one is quality time. Spending time together. It's like, yeah, you can give me all the money in the world, all the luxuries and everything, but if you are not with me, if you're not spending time with me, if you're not spending quality time with the children or your loved ones, they may not feel because that's how they feel loved is by having you with them just even doing nothing right just spending time together that quality time together is considered oh, that person takes time away from whoops there goes my necklace <laughs> that person that i truly care for is taking time away from work or from other things just to be with me. And that means a lot to me. So that's number one. Number two is physical touch. You know, it, it's, it's amazing that we think everybody wants to be touched and that's how they feel loved. I mean, there's couples who get in bed and everything and one is very huggy touchy and the other person is like oh, not again what do you want it's like i didn't want anything i just want to hug you and feel you so physical touch there's people who are huggy touchies right and believe it or not this is the most amazing thing hello henry <laughs> I got to spend Valentine's with my daughter. I saw that. See, 
the thing is there is a lot of people who are very huggy touchy holding hands and everything and not everyone receives love so that's the second misconception it's like i hug you i kiss you um i i cuddle with you uh i love you and the person is like great but you're doing it for you that's what you like and i don't feel loved why because maybe they're not the feely touchy person so the best way is to learn how to communicate in their language number three gifts hmm have you ever realized that there are so many couples that one person constantly buys gifts for the other one ah my necklace just broke interesting right so um they buy gifts because they like to be gifted and it's like I give you all this I bring you all this flowers the gifts I give you all the things that you want you like you got the purse you got this it's just like yeah but that doesn't mean you love me that's thank you very much for giving it to me um, it's like it's not the feeling so the next one we're going to go over all this and then i'm going to explain it the next one is acts of service and what does acts of service mean that means we go somewhere and you do something um you help me with the chores at home and i ask you I, i'm tired and you bring me breakfast or you make a small little plate for for you to bring it to bed or you wash my car for me and I walk out and I see the car and I'm going oh he loves me or she loves me you know and I say washing cars because I love washing cars anyhow <laughs> and anyone who washes a car for me to me is like oh thank you very much for that so appreciating acts of service and the last one is words of affirmation so for those who are very much auditory and words matter especially with the right tonality hmm, words of affirmation are powerful now if someone is not auditory and you constantly tell them I love you I really care for you oh you're so beautiful you're doing this you're that and I truly appreciate you you're such a good mother you're such a good friend you're such a great father you did amazing work if they're not auditory but they're kinesthetic which is the feely touchy person you can say anything in the world it's like great I'm glad you say the words but I don't feel it why not one time hug me so I can feel it so this book is so powerful and I would highly recommend for you to get this book and you know do, do one thing sit with your lover sit with your children uh, any any kids uh, over the age of nine or ten they already get to know how they express love and how they sort of appreciate and feel loved so you can ask all these questions there's quizzes for you to not only take but explore about both of you or all of you the entire family it has changed the dynamic of the communication how you communicate in life how you communicate in um, in expressing in a way that the other person your partner your lover your children your friends even your friends colleagues in at, at work that there is no animosity so here's the thing there are consequences to miscommunication and the biggest thing that I work with my clients 
you know, we say hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy, in effect, is to bypass the conscious level, the conscious analyzing, critical uh, thinking, which is being fully aware, to tap into our subconscious mind and our body language. You know, a part of NLP, which I also practice, the body language, which is neuro-linguistic programming, it is the programming of what we say is not equal to how our body speaks. So you might turn and go like this, and you can be sitting like this, and there are some pictures and poses that you see that people are taking a picture for let's say for real estate or professional and they're doing this and a lot of pictures right and they want to come across the professional but this is the professional how you look if the head is tilted up tilted down the eyes are this way or that way everything matters even in the picture you can tell if you are if you have learned neurolinguistic you have learned a body language a part of the the gestures the eyes even eyebrows and if someone is uncomfortable they might say something this is defense but if you bring the hand down that means I'm hugging myself I'm comfortable I'm defensive I'm comfortable I'm reserved I am comfortable I am right so this versus this and and if this is showing it's a whole different language than this so everything has its meaning so we talked about the five languages of love right now i want you to also know that there are some mis uh, communications that it's best to avoid uh, it affects your communication one when you're not communicating properly the way the other person wants to feel loved appreciated uh, and the expression the tonality and everything one there is misunderstanding so the misunderstanding of, I thought you loved me. Well, I do, but I don't feel it. You're not showing it to me. It's like, what else do you want me to do? I buy you all the gifts and everything. Remember, if they are doing it over and over, if someone is huggy touchy and everything, and you're like, okay, enough, remember, maybe perhaps they are the huggy touchy person. And that is how they want and they feel appreciated and loved. So when you want to express love to someone, it's not so much about you. It's about them feeling it. Remember, I started by saying, how do you feel loved? Not are you loved we are loved by our children by our parents by our lover by our partner it's how it is communicated we're talking about so when the communication of how you need to feel it it's not expressed for you that's where is a miscommunication and misunderstanding comes the second, the second thing is when we have not opened to even talk to each other and say, so do you know how you want to be loved? What do you want? How do you want me to love you? Is it the words of affirmation you need? Do you want me to do something for you? Do you like flowers? No. Do you like gifts? Well, yeah everybody likes it that means they are not the gift person and when you do something for them and they are ecstatic and they go google gaga that means acts of service 
or they just want you just to spend time with them all that so make sure you're not missing opportunities that's the second miscommunication missing opportunities and missing opportunities especially at work or at home with uh, a lover and it's so important sometimes we think that because I'm not loved or I don't feel loved I'm just gonna give you the silent treat treatment hmm nothing worse than punishment silent treatment is I'll show you not realizing that sometimes when someone is upset they need time out and it's not time out as a punishment but they need time for themselves so a part of communication is I love you but at this very moment that we are in an argument I cannot speak because I haven't learned how to express so I'm gonna take five minutes or ten minutes and just be by myself instead of right in the middle of an argument get up and walk out and the other person feels like what how dare you do this to me because it the the gesture of that is I feel dissed even though the other person does not mean to diss you they just needed time but they didn't even know how to express so not only communication of love but it's I need to love myself I need time for me to recoup before I either fly off the handle to say something or I didn't know this is my coping mechanism so and that creates unnecessary conflict so that's the third one miscommunication lack of proper expressiveness expressiveness <laughs> creates unnecessary conflict do you see this I hope this is resonating with you are you with me right so um, Henri are you here do you does this make sense uh, it's so much of miscommunication and fights between partners and lovers and, and especially children it's like I want you to go to bed um, it's time for go to bed great it's time to go to bed mom said it's time to go to bed but that's not the command that a child really gets don't do that well fine I won't but they keep doing it why because the communication has not been proper for the subconscious mind to understand or this child to understand it so yesterday I was talking to a client of mine and she talked about her child children not doing it so and they go into this tantrum and then she screams and then they scream and I said what if we change the communication how does your child feel loved she's like I don't know I'm going yeah so we went through the love expressions the languages and she says well he's a huggy he constantly wants to hug me and everything and I said then when you want him to do something instead of telling him don't just go come close to him and the tone instead of scream comes lower like full on either the command or the authority voice with kindness and you say sweetie it's time for you to go to bed it's nine o'clock so it's time for you to go to bed not it's bedtime yeah everybody goes to bed no, you're not going to bed if it's bedtime but it's your bedtime ah it's my bedtime okay and it is nine o'clock okay now the command instead of screaming which 
irritates, you're sitting or coming close to them, and all she had to do is touch his hand, his shoulder, or just be present, and then say the right words that he understands, and not as a punishment, but frankly, this is the rule of the house. It's nine o'clock. It's time for me to go to bed. Aww. And then when she touches or guides him to the bedroom, and if you do that a few times, it gets it because now it's loving. Now it's kind. Then there is no feeling of, oh my God, mom is screaming and I'm going to scream back. And then we're, this screaming is not happening. So that's to eliminate miscommunication and unnecessary conflict. So the next one is mistrust. I don't trust the other person. You know, every time I say I love you and everything or I express it, I do everything for you. I spend time for you. I touch you. I hug you. I bring you this. What else do you want from me? Right? I don't know. I just don't trust and that's something that needs to be communicated first and foremost with yourself. The best way is to explore and find out how do I feel loved? What do I need to feel not only the love, but to trust someone? Do I have a trust issue or is there something else? And that mistrust, lack of communication that leads to mistrust, either at home or workplace, it creates more conflict. And mistrust is only within you. It's the same as when there is panic and anxiety, it's never from the outside. The outside is the trigger. What you feel, the anxiety, is from within. And the last thing that all this leads to is a lack and low morale. When there's conflict, when there's arguments, when all that happens, it's like it affects your own self-esteem, your own low morale. And when you don't feel good about yourself, guess what? You walk around with feeling low, low energy. Even your expectations is like, well, it's not going to happen anyhow. A person is not even capable of loving me I do everything so what's wrong with me am I not good enough why is it that they're showing all kinds of love to them and and here I am doing everything and I don't get it that means I'm not good enough so this entire thing of lack of communication comes back to you going into self punishment and negative talk, self-hurt, low self-esteem. So everything that I do with my clients is first and foremost, delve into understanding how they feel loved so they can love themselves. If it is gifts, go buy yourself a gift. If it is time, how do you spend quality time with yourself with your thoughts with your feelings with everything get to know you this is my favorite thing flowers and you know what i buy flowers for myself every week every week there's always flowers if not flowers there's plants if not i am walking and i am with nature every single day not only walking with my dog, if you have seen it, my posts, my stories, it's always about nature. It's always about words of affirmation. 
I'm auditory, I am present, I am spending time. Actually, spending time, I'm going to give you a, a story, a true story about something that happened in my life. And uh, <laughs> I'm doing this, it's like, oh my God, I'm going to share something about myself. Yes, Henry, so do I. By the way, not flirting, but I have to say that your hair is really... Oh! I didn't even see that and I started playing with my hair. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Even if it was a flirt, it made me smile. Thank you. <laughs> she lost my trust but not communicating important events. You know, she didn't lose your trust. She did not lose your trust. It's that the way it is communicated for you and to you. and you really care for that person, you want to know. And when someone keeps, you know, a secret or something important from their lover or the person that they are with is for you to also understand why they kept that secret. Is it because they thought that you would come back with something negative? or you would be jealous, they didn't trust you to share with you. So there is a lot of communication that needs to be there for you to understand why they did not share it. So a part of, another part of couples when have to do it that we do it not you have to do this for me but when it comes to them that's not no it's how you're supposed to share it with me not I have to say it so did you share pertinent information about your events or important events with her and that is what we are talking about so communication comes as we get to learn about our lover or anyone that we love. I may love you, but I may not like what you said or what you did, but the love does not change. So there's so much about communication that is so important for both people especially lovers and partners to be open and learn how to express. You know, um, what I was going to share is I was dating this person and one time I was really sick, really sick. So when I am sick, frankly, I don't need a lot of pampering. Um, you know, I, you make soup for me or you bring something, thank you very much. But I, I'm not the person that you need to sit and hold my hand and everything. I'm quite independent in aspect. So he came and in the afternoon I was like, wow, you stopped by. Like, yeah, you were not feeling work or well and I wanted to see how you're doing. I brought you some flowers. Oh, thank you. It was absolutely wonderful. So that excited me. Next thing is like, I'm coughing, I'm sneezing, I wasn't feeling good. And he stayed. And I'm like, awesome. Okay, we're watching TV. I'm coughing. I just wanted to just turn around. We're dating. It's not that we're living together, right? And I just wanted to cuddle with myself with my pillow and go to sleep. But because he's there, I felt obligated to stay up or tend to him, make sure that he's okay, make sure that there's this um, hospitality person in me that is like, do you want coffee? No, go to bed. I'm like, well, I can't be in bed if I have to tend to you. It's like, no, I don't need anything. But you're sitting there with me watching TV and then he picked up a book and I'm like, well, if you wanted to read a book, why don't you just go to your home, and read your own book, and I'll be here cuddling and I can just go to sleep and feel good. 
<laughs> so it became a thing and after half an hour actually after an hour i was like do you mind if you go home it's like don't you want me to be here i'm going yeah but you've already been here now i just want to go well go ahead i'm like i can't go to sleep if i believe you're here and i have to tend to you communication 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 so i didn't know that was one of my pet peeves that i felt i have to tend to him but his thing was spending time quality time just doing nothing was his way of feeling loved but mine is that's not my language and i felt like okay you've already extended your welcome and i am good thank you for the flowers i felt loved but then no more so do you see how a miscommunication misunderstanding it breaks the chain and rethink well you're throwing me out of the house no i would feel loved if you left <laughs> did you kiss and the other caught the call <laughs> we did not kiss i was miserable <laughs> but i'll tell you something i didn't know all this about communication about languages of love it came out years later and we were talking and I said do you remember this time and he says yeah the day you threw me out of the house <laughs> I did it but that's and then we talked about it we laughed and he said you know I would be so happy if you had just come into my house and did nothing did your own thing and as long as I know you're there with me I'm like, okay I never knew that so learn about how you like to receive and allow someone to cherish you gift you take care of you your way and the best thing is for you to share it for that I hope this session was beneficial for you you know I truly enjoy being here and um, if it made a difference in one person's life then i have done my job thank you for being here henry henry thank you very much for being here and everyone who has expressed their own appreciation love in text in messages in every way i am truly grateful to you and uh, look forward to next week and until then god bless you may the universe of light surround you this is lisa bye bye thank you for being here if you want to check out some of the testimonials that i've got click right here but if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago two weeks ago even a year ago click right here